media in Johannesburg. This is The Real Economy Report. South Africa's first commercially viable biogas to electricity plant has successfully started providing renewable energy to automotive manufacturer BMW South Africa's Roslyn plant. Creamer Media's senior contributing editor online, Natasha Urendal, reports. A year after signing a 10-year offtake agreement, Bayer to Watt's 150 million 4.4 megawatt Bronco spray plant has generated first power to BMW's Pretoria plant. Now, around 30% of BMW's Pretoria plant is being powered by manure and organic waste, the first step in BMW's ambitions of bringing its Roslyn plant to 100% self-sufficiency by 2020. BMW SAMD Tim Abbott says that sustainability was a top priority in every boardroom meeting. If we look at sustainability, and I think somebody was sort of quite surprised about BMW saying, well, why, you know, why are you sustainable? I mean, it's one of the core principles of our organisation, uh, and it's something very, very dear to all of our hearts. And it's, it, it's one of the aims of BMW going forward, that we want to be 100% sufficient, self-sufficient in the production world by, where well, our aim is 2020. Uh, that's what we want to do in everything that we do. So every area of our business, we're looking at sustainability in terms of the production process, in terms of the cars we build and the waste that we produce as well. bio to what CEO Sean Thomas explained that the plant feeds manure and organic waste into two digesters that produce the biogas feedstock. We're looking at 500 uh, tonnes a day. In terms of those 500 tonnes, I would say around 160 tonnes comes from the manure. Another 40 to 50 tonnes would come from the paper sludge, maybe more. The, then the, the remainder would be your abattoir waste, would be your liquids. And, um, but in terms of ratio, the manure is the highest ratio, but uh, the lowest in terms of yield. I would call it a, a landfill avoidance site. We processed waste, organic waste that would have gone, some of which would have gone to composting or landfill. Uh, we process that waste, we use it to generate biogas, and the biogas is then a fuel to run the gas engines. Uh, the plant installed capacity is 4.4 uh, megawatts. Uh, if we're consistently getting to, uh, more waste than what we need for, for a base load supply of 4.4 megawatt, our intention is to expand. The network, the grid, the medium voltage network to which we're connected can take up to 12 megawatts and the plant was built in a, in a modu modular fashion so uh, we will just add uh, digesters, uh, a couple of digesters if we want to expand the plant. Um, the interest by industry in terms of diverting their waste has been quite considerable. So we, we do see that it's, uh, it, it's something that, that, that can happen in the near future. While there were no cemented plans in place to expand the Bronco spray plant at the moment, Bio2Watt was set to start construction on a second waste to energy plant on a dairy farm in the Western Cape in 2016, with additional farms being sought for partnerships. The model we're doing here in terms of uh, Bronco Spade Biogas Plant, we're doing our second plant now in Marmersbury outside of Cape Town. It, it's, it's, instead of being on a feedlot, we're, we're on a dairy farm there. I think one of the largest dairy farms, the largest dairy farm actually in South Africa. Um, we're also using mixed waste that's available within the vicinity. And we're in discussion for our other projects within the country as well. So we're targeting, uh, I would say, medium-sized towns where there's considerable volumes of organic waste that, that are not being used and that we can process to generate a decentralized type of power and, uh, and supply either industry or, or municipality. Other news making headlines this week. Upgraded City Deep seen as a key to improving Joburg Durban logistics performance. Johannesburg municipality to continue public transport initiatives and industrial equipment company opens new Wadeful sales office. Translate has opened its upgraded City Deep inland port and reported that its yearly container handling capacity had been doubled to 400,000 20 foot equivalent units following an 800 million rand investment program. So, City Deep therefore remains central in handling the cargo from the three major container ports of Devon, the port of Nuka, and the port of Cape Town. It also acts as an interchange for regional traffic de destined to inland provinces as well as the Southern African Development Community. This upgrade is part of the crucial SIP2 of the Presidential Infrastructure Coordinating Committee. 
The core components of this critical upgrade which we are celebrating today include replacing all container handling equipment with new state-of-the-art equipment. Uh, we've just seen uh, a rail-mounted gantry crane. We've seen uh, some new rich stackers and container handlers. We also are deploying here the latest of the ICT NAVIS terminal operating system on the same platform as the one which we've deployed on our container terminals and our ports. The city of Johannesburg plans to continue its focus on the implementation of an integrated transport system through its transport legacy projects following the Eco Mobility World Festival 2015, which took place in the Santon CBD in October. We are investing in the bus rapid transit system, dedicated lanes. We've already built the roads. We're now working on the stations, the PRT stations, and we'll be bringing in the bus fleet to support Santon and the dedicated bridge over the M1. Uh, into the interchange that would be in Weinberg and onto Louis Porter. And that's part, part of the legacy that we think is important. And that's why for us, Ecomobility was important because it's a pre precursor to the investments that we're making in those areas. With regards to the managed lanes, we anticipate to invest uh, an estimated amount of 10 million runs in uh, uh, signaling systems in more permanent infrastructure so that we make it safer for people that would be using these managed lanes. Industrial equipment sales and rental company Rentex South Africa launched its new sales outlet adjacent to its premises in Wadeville, Ikurleni, last month. The idea behind the sales centre was to bring the major brands of equipment such as Lincoln, Harris, UniArc, UniPower and make it more accessible to the general smaller and mid-sized engineering companies. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.